to ask all of our presenters some questions. Um, just incredible, you covered such a wide range of experiences and challenges, and it's just so impressive. Plug and Play has seen Metaverse for the past six plus months across the globe, and I think this is the most exciting examples that I've seen. Um, this first one is for each of you. I wanted you to talk a little bit about, in the opening, I mentioned the different transitions between the web. Web 1, email and publishing. Web 2, user-generated content. Content as king. What do you think will be the killer experience or the killer applications, the most important use case when it comes to Web 3 and the metaverse? Who wants to go first? Can I go first? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it is a very difficult question in the Web3, was this the killer app? And, but I think the point is the not a killer app the in the metaverse. I, in my opinion, the what is the killer experience in the metaverse and Web3? So first of all, I think that it, uh, it is expected that a transition of Web1 and Web2 is transition to the metaverse. and. Second is generating the uh, user's characteristic to the making their person. Yeah, yeah. Can I just add to that? Because I also wanted to talk a little bit about identity. So I think uh, the, ki the, the key experience, which is what Dan is also trying to sort of um, establish, is having your, building your own identity on, on, uh, on uh, the metaverse and creating your own world and sort of expressing yourself through whether that's character avatar or it's through travel or through um, uh, celebrity or wh whatever that might be. So I think that sort of inter social interaction using your own identity um, on, the, on the metaverse is the killer experience. The metaverse uh, is ahead of us, but it's not yet defined. We are on the way to define in each industries. And, and what each of us is experiencing here is the, the boundaries all of all those industries is getting blurry and blurry. And it's a, a connect connection is coming. And all industry itself, we're going to have a identity of the metaverse. So. And, and what metaverse should have, uh, the key elements of metaverse as in a travel uh, in the industry, it's more about if you do some efforts in a digital world, you should have some compensation of your effort. I strongly believe that that's the key part uh, in our metaverse for, for the users to engage and also spend within our platform. Well, the... Um we're, we're only bound by time, space, and existence, and, <laughs> and we found a way to manipulate it through virtually. And in the for, for Web3 and the metaverse, I, I believe there will be uh, restraints. Everyone's here, everyone believe in the freedom, but somehow we're not. And when you make an appointment, let's say let's meet up at uh, two o'clock at the lobby, you have to say the time and space, otherwise you can't meet each other. And for metaverse, to me, Everyone should have their own metaverse, and um, but uh, we we have let's say everyone here probably be, be gone from this world within hundred years. I don't know. Yes, but um, so within this limited time frame that we have, uh, we want to build a metaverse the right way. And I find that discipline coming from the film industry. I want to put people in the film and gaming and theme park and able to do that virtually with the social interactions and, uh, and sharing our thoughts and emotions together uh, with the help of AI, I believe it's, it's, it's re we are really close to getting that happen. And I believe that will be the killer app for, for the decade to come. Carpe diem, so making the most of those kind of human intersections. Very cool, yes. awesome. Crispy. Uh, actually, I don't really know the term, I mean the definition of Web3, but I think in my opinion, uh, what I understanding for Web3 is like connectivity, like, you know, semantic, right, in both ways. And then I'm not sure about what is going to be the killer app, but I, I kind of con uh, I prospect that the killer app is going to be 
uh, the probably like cloud-based data service, something like that. You have to get access to your own data and, and, and uh, any metaverse experience in whatsoever uh, environment, right? So um, maybe the trip to Z or you know John or me, you know, Noni Q will be the, the the best solution for Web3.0 uh, in the future. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, lots of different perspectives. We'll see who's right. We're recording this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and I don't have to answer, so haha. -ha. The next question I want to put to you was, um, you know, why do users today, why do people spend time in the metaverse? What is it about that experience that's engaging or rewarding or giving you value? What, what is it about it that's so attractive to people who are starting to explore? Anyone want to take that? I think there are two things. Uh, people really want to spend their time in the metaverse. The first th thing is definitely it can be like versatile. It meta means like you can get any types of experience. In the real world, you have only one life. But in the metaverse, you have like 10 lives, 100 lives, you know. So that is definitely the reason. But also, uh, it's kind of opposite reason. You want to get some real experience in the, but you can't really get it in the real world. That can be also, you know, uh, yeah. A bi uh, for example, uh, maybe I'm not a smoker, but if you want to stop smoking and then you want to go to some like smoking seminar, then it's kind of embarrassing in the real world. I mean, Korean culture especially. But in, uh, in the metaverse, you can be anywhere, so you can be like anonymous. So that is also one of those reasons uh, people spend time in the metaverse. If I may add to that, because I had some similar thoughts. Um, sorry, I'm keeping like to add on someone's comments. Um, but so um, on Jan, what we're trying to do is like, you can't go back in time, right? Let's think about when you were in college, when you were in your 20s. You miss a certain street that you, you used to go every day and hang out with your friends with. You can go to the same street, but it's not the same. Right? It's very different now with different buildings and different shops. But virtual world on Metaverse, you can actually rebuild that time, that space. Um, and so it's something that you can only enjoy on, on virtual worlds, not something that you cannot sort of find um, offline. So um, on Jan too, like we wanted to do that so you can actually nostalgically go to places uh, where you used to hang out. You can still hang out there with people around the world who, who also miss the similar sort of um, vibe and street, whether that's London, Paris, you know, Montmartre, somewhere, right, from the 1990s or 80s. Um, so just wanted to add to that. So yeah, a mirror is uh, was a good keyword to use because, um, I mean, we, we are interacting because we want to have that empathy to understand each other, meaning we want to find ourselves. I don't want to sound like a philosopher here, but your friends, your family, world that calls you, whomever, hey, father, hey, hey, daddy, hey, uncle, hey, Tom, like, that's a mirror. Like, the world is a mirror to you, defines who you are. And the metaverse is a good way to simulate a different type of existence and a world without being so much in pain and without, because uh, every day, everyone changes in a way. Like, let's say you got a haircut, you left your hair, that's part of you that, that's leaving, but that's but you are still you, but, but what defines you? And, and even though time passes, we're changing every time. The only way to define yourself is to interact through the interact with the world and I each individual who could reflect upon you, right? Uh, that's how I believe the metaverse, yeah. Amazing. Um, gosh, I love that. Just reflecting on some of those answers, understanding the metaverse can build a deeper connection to the real world or exploration of identity and self-identity. Uh, just really, really cool thoughts and ideas there. Um, what's so what's the role of industry, of corporations, of enterprises? What is their place and their role in the metaverse? Uh, I think the blend uh, to the digital transformation of each company will be really important. Uh, so the currently our metaverse platforms and services and technologies and other experiences are really separated by, yeah. So making it uh, difficult for customers to share their experience like uh, avatars or their own services like that. 
So therefore, it is uh, so that it refers to convergence of uh, the contents production and the platform sharing between the each metaverse company will be uh, continuously needed. Yeah. Decentralized, <laughs> please, and because the because everyone has to be on the same page. I mean, the world got closer, smaller, uh, thanks to the internet, everyone sharing information. Now we need some, someone or someone to uh, something to set up the right standard, and someone has a, a, a louder voice to, to, to sort out the rules, I would say. And I, I, I really expect the larger corporations and whatnot, compared to like s a small startups like us, hopefully be able to set up the a good standards and hope to uh, decentralize because metaverse should be for everyone. Small for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think the company, all company has their own life time and like a human being. So like big company, they can do uh, some, some changes in their way of thinking about this young customers, what they're really thinking about. And, and the, I think the metaverse is something, the phenomena that is uh, started from the young generations. Uh, looking back, why? Why they are so, so, uh, they why they are so want this new universe within this digital world? Why is that? And to answering that, I would say it's because they're not satisfied in the real world. That's the first thing that I think we really have to think about. For instance, for the housing part, not only Seoul, South Korea, and it's all about young people's problem that they cannot have the house because it's too too expensive worldwide. So instead of having a house in real life, in real here, they want to possess something in the virtual world. That's I, I think that's the part that we have to seek for the customers' needs and, and think what we can do for those young generations to, to make their life better. Although it's a virtual or the reality, it's about the happiness and the connectivity. So um, as Chris mentioned, I also believe in sort of the conversion or sort of crossing between virtual world and real world. Because on Metaverse, I think if it's completely virtual and not there's no relevance to your real world, it, I don't think it's going to be sustainable enough. Yeah, you might go in and have some fun, but you're not going to feel it as relating to you as it is um, uh, compared to when it's actually crossing over with real world and having more real world elements to it so it feels really relevant. So if on Met Metaverse, all the brands are fake brands that you don't know, it's going to feel much less relevant. So the corporations, the enterprises, if they actually digitize their assets and items and everything, um, a lot of things online on Metaverse, I think it's going to be it's, it's going to be a win-win for everyone, I believe. So then one final question for you, which would be uh, how easy and any tips since you have done it and you've been through building experiences and building products within the current environment of the metaverse, uh, how easy is that to do for someone new who wants to build something or anything that you've learned that you wanted to share as a final thought? Let me go first this time. <laughs> um, so the question was how easy? Not easy. <laughs> Very difficult. Um, it's, it's taken a long time to come up with our beta version. And it's going to still become be very difficult to actually upgrade and go through the roadmap and path that I would love to go. I think in, in this sort of arena, metaverse and everything, I feel like I, I just talked about sort of you know, crossing over between real world and, and, and virtual world. The difficulty that I feel is it cannot be the same on virtual world as it is on, on real world, but it cannot be completely different because people need some relevance. So it have to be like, there has to be a balance, a, an attractive balance. So it's similar enough, but also different. So they, they can enjoy the metaverse as metaverse. Um, at the same time, um, you have to be different from other metaverse worlds out there, which there are very many <laughs> these days. Um, and so I, I think you need to find that edge and the balance between how the experience um, will feel for the users, especially um, also it has to be mobile friendly, right? So I think that's the difficulty, yeah. Maybe one more thought? Um, 
let me answer, uh, because I didn't answer for the last question. So this answer is going to be the answer for both questions. So that is, uh, the last question is the, what is the role of enterprises in the metaverse, right? So th that is the role. The, the enterprises, companies should make, build the metaverse easy for everyone. Uh, did you see the movie, watch the movie, the Lady Play one, right? The Oasis, you know, it's uh, very easy to build, very easy to get in. So maybe some of us, one of us will build Oasis in the future, then people will get in easily. Uh, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much. If you enjoyed the conversation, keep it going. We've got the K-Metaverse Pavilion over there. That's also where you can find out more information about the demo day that will be today at 2.30 p.m. So more information over at the K-Metaverse Pavilion. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, have a great day. <laughs>